Hello everyone, Dolph Norkel here again today, and we're back with the last in the series of the Antics Net ISO videos. We're going to show you how to do a cool, I'm going to do a little quick customization to my installation, and then we're going to show you how to use the ISO the snapshot tool to make your own bootable ISO. And by the way, that bootable ISO will boot on a UEFI system, and the Antics installer that we've already installed will install to a UEFI system. Okay, so let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to insert a USB stick here because uh, I have some files on it that I need for the customization. All right, pin drive, custom, and these are the files I need. So I'm just going to drag this whole folder to the desktop. And then we'll just eject this guy here. Well, maybe we'll eject him. Okay. All right, so the stick's done. We're going to take the stick back out. And there, I don't have to fool with it anymore uh, on the system. So, all right, so what we've got here, we've got, uh, we're going to uh, open this up here with a Kaha and then we're also going to open a root Kaha and because I need to move some of my picture files to a certain folder now you can do this with your home folder if it's your own personal installation that's fine I'm gonna make I'll be making it an ISO that's called um, where you reset all the accounts so I want certain files to be available no matter where they're located so I'm not going to store some of these files in the home folder where you can do your usual customizations so I'm gonna go into so this would be like if you want to make it an ISO that you want to give to somebody else so I'm going to go to let's see here I gotta remember where I'm at uh, user share pix maps and I'm gonna drag two of my pictures from in there here my the antics logo in the antics menu ping and they're copied in, they're not moved, so don't worry if these things don't disappear. And then I'm going to go to user share backgrounds, ah, backgrounds, mate, and desktop, and I'm going to throw in my Doctor Who Kraken space and time uh, picture. And I do believe, yes, so and I'm going to set that as my wallpaper. Well, maybe I'm going to set it as my wallpaper. Change basket background. Uh, add. Da, 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 da. Mate desktop. And there it goes. Just took a second. Okay, so there is the uh, my my wallpaper. Now I want to change my icon set just because I can. So I'm going to, go to the themes first. I'm going to change the theme. I'm going to change the theme to Numix. Okay. And now I'm going to, to click on the customize button and go to icons. This is, seems to be, for coming from the XFCE world, this seems to be overly complicated for getting to this stuff. But I'm going to choose the Fianza Cupertino icon set. And now I'm done customizing that look. Cool. And I also need to customize, you know, I mentioned that the light DM and grub configurations were very plain uh, we're gonna change those as well um, I've already made files but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do in the case of the grub it's very simple uh, no, no 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 cancel 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 uh, we're gonna to navigate to Etsy default grub we're gonna open that in pluma open in pluma and there's no back you see there's a background that's just back to JPEG the Antics wallpaper is just black with the world logo and the Antics logo at the bottom. I am going to add uh, a different background. I'm going to add the same background that I had. Uh, where did the other file go? There it is. Uh, why does it want to run? Uh, open and leave pad, fine. I'm going to add the same backdrop that we have currently that I have my current wallpaper. I'll have to make all my wallpapers the same. So we're going to add that to Grub. All right. File, save. And now we're going to, we're going to open Terminal and do sudo update Grub. And this should find the wallpaper and do all the things. Yeah, found background wallpaper, 
fine, found ground image, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we should be good there. Okay, so that should be good. And now I want to change the light DM background too. So we're going to go to Etsy light DM, light DM, and we're going to find, now I've already made the changes over here that I want. Um, you can do this, you can do this with like light DGK, light DM GTK greeter editor or something like that. Uh, I made these by hand with, so, so we're going to modify the light DM GTK greeter.com file. Um, I made the changes in this one already. Dang on it. Open here. Uh, and you can see, let's see, let's scroll down here, I'll show you the changes. I added the background and also a theme name. I'm going to change the theme to Numix because it was a very plain theme before. And I'm going to use the Fans of Cupertino icons. I'm just going to copy this. Control C into the same file on the installed system. Da 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 da. da. Background, user background, theme name, icon, theme name. There we go. Yep, I'm going to save that. And now when we log out, we should get... Now you see the icon changed to a Ubuntu icon. We'll take care of that in just a second. So we're going to go over to... Uh, whoops, wrong menu. System, now we're going to log out. And you can see we've now got the uh, different theme. We've got uh, a different icon set here. That, that that's 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 good. That's what we want. Okay. Now I'm going to use it. I'm going to add something to the panel here. The let's see here. I'm going to use the other menu, the Monte Advanced menu. Add that to the menu. You see it puts it over here. I'm going to remove that one, and I'm going to move this one to the corner. And now I'm going to do the preferences. Now this is why I like this menu. One, I can change some things on it. So I'm going to change the icon to, whoops, wrong antics icon, antics menu. I resize the antics icon down to 24 uh, point. Uh, and, it, and it will use the super L key. Now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to always show the favorites plane first. And favorites. I want one column for the favorites. Places. Fine. I'll leave. I'm gonna leave all that other stuff alone. So now when I hit the super key, I get this menu here. That's pretty good. And you get, and you can do the uh, search thing, and it comes up fairly quickly, actually. Okay. So those are all the customizations I want to make um, to the system. But now I want to save those so that ISO snapshot when it rolls it up, when the new user is created on the other side it will save all those changes. Now anything in the root file system that's an automatic. Now but this stuff, the Mate customizations are in the home folder. So how do we do that? How do we give the new user those same customizations? Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Well it's not too tough. What we're going to do, we are going to open a, ka a root Kaha and we're going to navigate to Etsy scale and if we control H to show the hidden files, we'll see the dot config folder. You see, there's nothing. There's 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 no mate or anything in here. If we go into my home folder, the regular home folder, hit control H and go to config. There's also no mahi mate config. Well, there's a mate menu, but that's not the same thing. Mate stores its settings like this in this decomp database file. <sighs> Okay, fine. Well, the good news is, is if you if you keep your settings relatively simple, all you gotta do is drag this folder over here. The settings that I've done will definitely take. Now, when we run the snapshot, that file will be used for the new user on the other side of the install, and it will have these changes like this. It'll have the wallpaper change. It'll have all that stuff uh, by default. All right, so I'm done with the custom annex folder. I'm gonna get rid of that thing. And we're going to go into uh, uh, ISO snapshot because we're ready. Whoops, clicked off the thing. Password. Okay, so it's going to say use space on root 3.8 gigabytes. Uh, you got free space 5.6. This is going to work. If you got at least 10, 12 gigabytes hard drive, this will work. This will work okay. It's going to put the snapshot in a place called default. Place by default in home slash snapshot. You can choose a different folder if you want. I'm going to leave it there. But we are going to make a quick edit 
to this exclusion file. This is where you set the exclusion files. Now, for preserving accounts, this will save the home folder. I'm going to reset all the accounts. Okay. So that when when I'm done, when a snapshot's done and I boot it, it's going to say it's going to have the demo account, not the not my Dolphin account. I'm going to edit the configuration file on Adeline though. Not the not the configuration file, the exclusion file. And we're going to add a line for because there's a there's a there's an interesting thing. If you delete a file as root, it goes into the root trash can, but there's no way to access the root trash can. So we're going to uh, delete. We're, we're going to uh, add this line to the trash or to the excludes file, so we don't sync the trash file. It's going to keep our eyes a little bit smaller. Stop! Right there. Don't run the snapshot yet. We, I'm back from the future. You gotta install two more packages. I actually gotta install one package for the installer to work. There's a dependency that I didn't quite catch. I've added it to the show notes, so maybe you'll never notice if you just did a lot of cut and pasting. But I need one more package for the installer to work correctly. Uh, keyboard selections. And there's actually turns out that I have finished the snapshot and determined that there is some problem, probably because I'm running alpha code because I haven't had this problem in the regular stable release code, um, and that some of the grub files actually don't make it onto the ISO. So I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to get around that. All right, so um, before I run the snapshot, we need to run... Uh, we need to install one more app, one more package, and that is console data. This this stores the keyboard information that the installer uses to uh, for selecting keyboards. Now you can select it from the uh, from the initial boot up sequence uh, from the F menus or the custom boot entry menus if you're using UFI. But if you if you if you wait till the installer, uh, you need this package. This is where the installer gets its data. Okay, that's done. That's all you gotta do for console data. So do we get install console data? You can do it from Synaptic. It doesn't matter. The other thing is a little more tricky. So we're going to go into uh, Etsy, and you're looking for the grub D folder. This grub D folder. Th these packages. <laughs> For whatever reason, the folder remains, but the packages are gone on the snapshot that I made. Um, I have tried a gazillion different ways of getting around this. It does not happen. This doesn't happen on the MX snapshot tool. It doesn't happen on the stable ISO snapshot tool. It's only on the alpha the alpha codes. I don't know if something's funky there or if I, I don't know what the deal is. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to deal with it in a quick and dirty way. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy these files to a new folder in the in the same area. So if we go to Open Administrator, I actually tried just renaming the folder. That doesn't quite work. Uh, it's close, but not quite. So we're going to I'm going to make a new folder, create folder, and I'm doing this as super user. I'm just going to name this folder something weird, like I'm going to Fred. Okay, and I'm going to copy all these files into the Fred folder. Control C, Fred, Control V, there they are. Okay, now I'm going to return back to the snapshot to myself in the past, making the snapshot, except now when the snapshot's done. And when I do the next video for installing, it's all going to work. Back to the future, back to the future. All right, that's it. It's okay to start. You're ready to go. On my system, this takes about 15 minutes. I'm going to let it go. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we got the all finished. Now we'll go back through here. Uh, you can see it's made an ISO of 865 megabytes. Uh, this is where it is. You can walk, look, go see and look at all the process. It's all here for you. It basically takes the entire file system, compresses it down into a SquashFS file, and then burns an ISO to that. Burn, uses that to burn the, the ISO. So that's done, and it will be not in your home folder, but it will be in home slash snapshot, and that's where the files are. Now you can use a tool like Live USB Maker or something like that to to uh, to burn this to a USB stick and reboot and hopefully install it on another computer. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post.
at angstfreeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.